Homework 9, Distance, Midpoints, and Circles, Video 4. The remainder of the videos will focus primarily on circles, but at the end, we'll look at one problem that unites all three topics. First off, let's define a circle. If we were live in class, I would ask you to tell me what a circle is. Chances are you would give me a definition that's close but not correct, and I would draw something that would conform to your definition but not be a circle. And eventually, somebody would be forced to tell me that a circle, in so many words, is a set of points that are equidistant, meaning the same distance from a fixed point. That fixed point is called the center. That distance from the center is called the radius. We're going to be doing a few things with circles. We'll be writing the equations of circles based on the center and the radius. We'll be extracting the center and the radius from a given equation of a circle, and we'll also be graphing them. We're actually going to start by graphing this one en route to finding its equation. Find the equation of a circle whose center is 6, 7 and whose radius is 4. I want to start by showing you the best way to draw this circle. Now, we all know what a circle looks like. But in the homework, you will be asked to click on things to draw a circle. So I want to show you how to find the information that you need to draw the circle. The first thing you need to do is locate the center. Six comma seven is about here. I'm trying to put it out of the way because I know what's about to happen next. Now believe it or not, that center is not part of the circle. That's just a feature that helps define the circle. To find the circle, we need to locate the points that are four spaces away from the center because the radius is four. Now, the easiest direction to go from the center is up, down, left, and right. For example, if I start at 6, 7 and go four more spaces to the right because the radius is four, then that would put me at 10, 7 because I went four spaces beyond six. However, if I went four spaces to the left of the center, one, two, three, four, that would put me here at two comma seven because I went four less than six. So those are two points in my circle. But let's go up and down as well. If I go up four spaces from the center, one, two, three, four, my x doesn't change, it's still six, but my y value just increased by four. So seven plus four is 11. And if I went down four spaces from the center, one, two, three, four, that would put me here. I'm still over six, but my y value used to be seven. Now I just lowered it by four. Seven minus four is three. And that gives me four points that I can draw four quarter circles to make one circle. But that didn't answer the question. That just helped draw the picture. How do you find the equation of a circle? Well, to find the equation of anything, you have to ask yourself, what do all the points on that graph have in common? So we're going to pick a random point over here and just call it x comma y. That's a good generic name for a point. And ask ourselves, what must be true in order for that point to be on the circle? Well, by the definition, you're on a circle if you're the right distance from the center, and that distance in this case is 4. So that means that we need this distance to be 4. Wait, distance? We have a formula for distance. It was on the board previously and I erased it. The formula for distance is distance is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the differences of the x's and the differences of the y's. The difference of the y's. Well, I've got everything I need to put into this formula. I've got the distance between the points. I know this is the radius, and radius starts with r. But this d represents distance. Radius is a distance. So I can put 4 right here for the distance. Now, what can I put for the x's and the y's? Well, one of the two points I know exactly. It's 6, 7. The other point is generic, x, y. Let's call this our second point and the center our first point. So first x and first y. First x and first y. Second x and second y. 
At this point, we technically have the equation of the circle. It's an equation of all the points that are on the circle. But to make it look prettier, let's square both sides. If you square both sides, you get four squared on the left, which will become 16. And if you square the right side, it cancels the square root. Now we get a slightly better looking equation. Ah, who are we kidding? It's much better. It doesn't have the square root. And of course, four squared is 16. Now, if you're thinking, should we write down each parenthesis twice and foil it? You could. I wouldn't. But you, because you'd be destroying something that is pretty convenient. Because if you'll notice closely, this equation of the circle still contains information. It contains the coordinates of the center, 6 and 7. And in a subtle way, it also contains the radius. I know the radius is 4 and 4 is not in here, but it sort of is because it's the square root of 16. So this example shows us that um, the equation of a circle can and usually does contain the information that built the circle, both the center and the radius. If we were to foil all this out, combine like terms, move the 16 over, we would lose all of that. It would still be the correct equation, but it would be called uh, general form instead of standard form. Both of those adjectives are weak. If I had to call this anything, I would call it center radius form of the circle. Hey, I think I'll call it that in the next video.